Hey y'all, sorry for the delay. Some friends stopped over. So this is se session three in my intro to mixed media class. Um, the first session we talked about um, preparing our services. The second session we put um, a couple layers of paint on there. So this is of the transparent paint. So in this session I wanted to show you a little bit about usually I put about three layers of transparent paint down and then I go with some opaque. Um, so I'm going to use my alizarin crimson this evening for both of these pieces just to make it easy. Um, so I'm putting a little bit of my paint out on my surface and then I'm going to also put a puddle of the gesso so on the surface so and I kind of just make a little bit bigger blob of that than I do the paint um, so I take one of my brushes and then this is where it, you just kind of have to play with it a little bit until you get I, I don't generally use as much water on my brush when I'm doing this as I do um, when I'm just painting so I leave it more creamy, if you can kind of see the way it's acting on my palette here. So until I get the color about like I like. So you'll notice that it lightens the color, but you can also see, um, let's see if I can go over here, if I paint it, then it's, it's now opaque. The gesso has lended, uh, or lent hit its opacity to the transparent paint. So not only did it lighten it in color, but now you're not going to be able to see through it as well. So, um, and again, so I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Um, sometimes I, if it's not coming, I'll just spritz a little. So, and that, it just kinda depends. The uh, paint the, tends to dry a little bit lighter, uh, not as strong in, in color. Um, so, and I don't tend to do an entire um, section or the, the whole piece. So sometimes I just do um, bits and pieces. So I'll just kind of go up and down on this one. So I'll put a little bit at the top. So a little bit maybe here. So you can see that where the this paint is that I've just applied, you can't see the layers through it like you could when we did the transparent layers last night. So that's kind of what you're you're going for. Oh, I didn't forget to go all the way to my edge. So um, now one thing that's cool that you can do with the opaque um, paints, the transparent does it some, but it's just not as visible. So um, so this is just plain rubbing alcohol in a squirt bottle. This one has too fine of a mist. I really prefer this type of nozzle, um, and I've not been able to find another squirt bottle like that. So, um, so I just take it out, and then I flick some of the alcohol on the still damp. It can't be soupy wet, but you still want it to be fairly damp. Um, so, and I don't know, hopefully you can see how the, the alcohol resists the paint, and so it kind of spreads it out and gives a nice water droplet kind of look to it. So, um, another thing that we can do, I'm going to switch this one over. So, kind of keep experimenting with different sets, setups to figure out what works better for y'all. Um, so, on this one, I think I'll just do like the lower portion of the board. So, and again, you can still, I, it's not, I'm not wanting it to be perfectly opaque because um, I don't want to lose all of my layers necessarily. Um, sometimes I do later on. Um, but another thing you can do, um, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do at this stage. But I'll just um, go over a, a few of them this evening. Um, this is a stamp that I made. I can't even remember what um, this imprint is from. Um, I used both sides. If you can, um, this one is, I think, a little bit easier for you to see. Um, this is heat moldable foam, and it comes 
in these these this size block. So you heat it up with like a heat gun or on like the pad of your coffee pot if you have one of those kind anymore. And then when it's warm, you imp you hold it on whatever surface that you want to make a, a stamp out of, and then it retains the shape once it cools. So this is one of the stamps that I've made. So I'm just gonna stamp and pull up paint, and then I'm just gonna apply the paint up there. So I've talked a little long, and so it's not reapplying the paint super well, um, but it is some. So I don't know if that's visible enough to you, but so anyway, the, the one thing with the acrylic paint, um, it will build up in layers. So you want to be sure and not, if you want to retain the detail of your stamps, then you want to put it in water. Um, and so I usually have just a tub of water. I'll bring that over so you can see. You can see all the dried paint in the bottom. So I have like an old Rubbermaid tub, and so I just toss them in face down um, when I'm working. And then that way, later on, that's going to prevent the paint from drying on the sponge. Later on, I can go back and clean the, the sponge. So, um, so here's some other stamps that I've cut out of um, the insulation foam that you can get in large sheets. So, um, so that's basically uh, what you're going to want to do at this stage. You can then go back and do more layers of the transparent, more layers of different colors of the opaque. You can really, again, you're just wanting to play with the paint, see what it does. Um, a lot of times at this stage, you know, I get curious. Well, I wonder what would happen, you know, if I took my, I'd rather not have a sharp, well, so if I took my pencil and went over, so how's that going to do? So the, the paint's still damp and so it kind of smudges it a little bit and it's crisper where, um, where the paint isn't. So I probably should have gotten out. I use baby wipes and I can't find mine. Here they are. Um, so I'm still not completely unpacked for my demo on Sunday. So um, another thing is to use baby wipes. They work great for cleaning off your hands, um, as well as like your stamps, as long as it's not, you don't get into the, the detail or whatever. So anyways, um, that's, I think all I have for this evening. So I'm kind of doing them step by step for you. So that way it's easy for you to, to follow along, go back and review um, or whatever. So, um, Oh, one thing I did want to show you, since I've got a big puddle of the gesso, then, um, sorry. Okay, here we go. So, on the, I'm going to move this over here out of the way, this one as well. Um, one thing that I do, these are the deli papers that um, I... So I'm going to stir this up that I mentioned in the um, supply list. Sorry, I can't. It's difficult for me to talk and paint all at the same time. Um, so at this point, I spread this out, and I could just let it dry again, and it will peel up later. Um, but a lot of times, I like to, I make my own collage material. So you can see this is like tissue paper, which you can use tissue paper as well. Um, this is kind of a nice size to use. So um, so I'll take this, oh, I'll do this one. I'll take this purchased stamp that I have. And oh, this is a little bit thick for the detail of this stamp. So you kind of, there we go. So I just continue to stamp. So, and again, once I'm done with that one, I'm going to put it to where the paint side is down in my bucket of water. Um, what else do I want to do? So, but basically I just start applying, um, so I'll move this one aside to let it dry. Um, you can also just use your brayer, so, and you can put some on there, and that kind of has a nice 
textured effect to it. So that's also a good way. Probably I should have done this one first and then the stamp because it kind of thins the... So, so anyway, there's this one you can see. And usually you can see a little bit of a ghost of the... Um, um, to the paper behind it, but mostly it kind of disappears into your piece. Um, so it's as if you got that texture, but you can, with it being separate, and I can show you how to do that um, on another, when we're working on the collage, um, you can determine exactly what size and shape you want your collage material to be, and then um, work it out that way. So, um, so again, I'm going to put this in my, my water bucket, get it nice and wet so that way I can clean it later. Um, and then since I have thinned out quite a bit of this, then I think I will be able to get a more successful stamp. So I have, I let, I have some of these other purchased stamps, but the, the detail is very fine. You can't paint your paint on there, or at least I haven't been able to, um, paint the paint on there and have it um, keep that um, the fine detail of the stamp so but if you have a small amount of paint there on your palette or on a firm surface if you're using um, one of the palettes with a sponge in it um, then I would I would just get you know a small piece of plastic and paint or bra brayer um, it on there and then go from there. So, but you can see that I'm able to achieve or retain most of that fine detail with this stamp. Um, and like I said, otherwise I would not be able to. So, um, and I, it may be just a, a, a means of the brush, brushing it on there, and so then it kind of puddles or pools. I'm not quite sure. So, but... And you can see it has kind of picked up some of the blue from last night. So, so anyway, once I've used up most of the paint um, making my collage materials, then I just let that dry and I paint right on top of it the next time I'm um, coming into work. So if for whatever reason, um, like I decided, because I've really made quite a big mess here, and I decided that I wanted to change colors at this point and I didn't want to, for there to be any paint intermingling, then I would just take my baby wipe and wipe it off. So that's gonna take a couple, you can also kinda, so, but you can see that the baby wipe is actually taking off, you know, even some of the, the earlier layers. So I think there must be a little bit of um, alcohol content or something in them that does that. So. So that's, um, and you can actually clean your palette every single night by using that method if you prefer. So anyways, I hope that all makes sense. Um, be sure and if you have any questions, find me on Facebook um, at Alice Arlene and, um, and or on my website, alicearlene.com, A-L-I-C-E-A-R-L-E-N-E.com. And um, feel free to contact me and ask whatever questions that you might have. So, um, so this is it for tonight, the third session. In the fourth session, we'll talk about collaging, um, and which is kind of a big, big part of. Whoops, these pages are sticking together. Better pull them apart, apart before I finish talking. Um, so that's kind of a big part of it being mixed media. So, because that's where you're actually mixing media um, in together. So, hope you join me tomorrow night about the same time. Talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.